What's going on? I have been inside all day and I'm going a little stir crazy so I had to get outside. I've only got about an hour left of sunlight and I'm just here at this little pond where I've caught bluegill in the past. I've got a little float on with my little 180th ounce mule jig. Enough yipping and yapping. Let's start casting blessing. Let's go. Just like I used in the last video, actually in Kansas, I'm using this little white plastic right now on a 180th ounce mule jig underneath this bobber. I'm probably gonna switch to a wax worm because I have a feeling it'll work better, but I wanna try the plastic for a few minutes. I feel like they won't be super picky here because I don't think they get a lot of pressure and I think there's just an abundance of gills and sunfish. So my guess is I should be able to catch some small fish today and just keep my fingers crossed that uh, maybe I'll luck into a bigger fish. But really today's goal is simply just to catch a couple fish because quite honestly, I've been inside all day and you know me, hashtag go outside. I love this plastic and I think it will work, but I think a wax worm is gonna work better. So I'm not gonna waste my time. Down the good old fashioned wax worm boys. Okay, let's see if that makes the difference. My guess is it will. Oh, oh, baby, oh baby, oh baby, oh baby, oh baby. Number one, we're on the board, we're on the board. There she is. The 180th ounce mule jig under a bobber is like my best friend. Okay, he's pretty small, I'm not gonna lie. But you can't complain about that, my friends. Little wax worm, he didn't even take my wax worm, which is nice. Let's uh, throw this puppy back. All right, well, we've been inside all day and now here we are outside and we just caught our first fish. I'm thinking we're gonna catch more and I'm hoping we can catch something bigger than that. But even if it's just a bunch of tiny bluegill, I'm okay with it because I'm just happy to be outside and I'm happy to be catching fish. You know, normally I'd be ice fishing right now. I'm really, really confused by this whole thing. Is it global warming? I don't know, but let's get back to catching. Let's go. I've only got about 18 inches of line in between my bobber and my jig. I wish that the sun didn't go down so early. I've said that in about 100 videos so far this year, but seriously, come on. There's goose poop everywhere. Good thing I'm wearing my muck boots. These muck boots are fantastic for goose poop. One of the biggest keys with this rig is just patience. You gotta remember that these fish are very inactive this time of year, so the vertical fishing is really just a waiting game. You gotta keep moving water, try to find a school of fish, but you have to also have confidence that there's fish probably down there looking at your jig. Every now and again, you can twitch it if you want, but nothing too crazy. In my experience, the more you work something, the less likely you are to catch fish in cold water situations. Patience is key. I'm sure there's fish down there eyeballing this jig. In fact, there's a bite. There he is. Oh, come on. Eat. Yeah, there he is. I knew I'd get one. It's all about patience, my friends. Just a little guy, another little one. But I tell you what, it's fun nonetheless. This place is just probably overpopulated to be quite honest with you. Look at that, there's like some faint orange markings on his tail, really pretty. I don't think there's any predators really in here. There might be, I don't I don't know of any. I feel like I would've ran into them while I was fishing before if there are, but I think what happens when you don't have any form of predator and you just have a bunch of bluegill and panfish, they ended up getting stunted growth and a lot of smaller fish. Even though I'm super ADD and have a hard time watching a bobber, I gotta be honest with you, I kind of like this style of fishing because it's new to me. Oh, there he is. Come on, eat it. Gotta wait until he pulls it under. He's just playing with it. He's thinking about it. Oh, I missed him. That was stupid. I set the hook like a madman. Oh, oh baby. Oh baby. Oh baby, yes. All right, that's, that's more like it. That was a better hook set. Look at that little guy. Jig right in the roof of the mouth, exactly how you want him, even on a small fish. I can't complain. I've showed it in the last video and I showed it again this video. This is a dynamite rig for cold water bluegill. You know, the wax worm especially helps because anytime you use a wax worm, you're probably gonna get more bites. But on top of that, in the cold water, using a wax worm is gonna give you that much better luck. Oh, oh man, he just smacked it. I think he, I think he might have it. Oh, got him. He was taking it back into the tree. That's what's up, look at that one. I think this is a, uh, huh. I don't know, not entirely sure which, what exact species is this? It looks like a hybrid of some type because you see how like all the broken lines, but then it's got orange on the, the fins like that. It does not look like a standard bluegill, but maybe it's just a young juvenile bluegill. I'm not sure. Um, it almost looks like it's got multiple different types of sunfish in it. I'll get a picture and I'll put it on Instagram so you guys can take a look and, and let me know what you think it is. It doesn't have the red dot right here, which is normally what indicates a pumpkin seed. It looks kind of like a pumpkin seed, but I know that's not what it is. I'm thinking it's a hybrid of some type. Y'all will have to let me know. Wonder if we can get one in the exact same spot. That one bit almost immediately, which would indicate that he's probably trying to pull it away from his buddies. I think one might be playing with it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, there he is. Hey, 
that would be our best fish of the day. It's kind of sad to say that this is the best fish of the day, but it definitely is. Clearly just goes to show there are a lot of small fish in here. But again, this one looks identical to the last one, and I don't necessarily know what it is, but I do know one thing. It's beautiful, and I'm happy to catch it. God, these fish are so cool looking. Just admire that for a minute. Isn't she pretty? She's pretty. All right. Well, we caught two in one little hole. Let's see if we can get a third. It seems like it's important for me to get it up next to the tree because I have a feeling they're up in that tree. It kind of suspended underneath. Oh, come on, eat it. There he is. Boom, three in a row. Now we're picking up a little bit. Look at the vibrant orange color on the belly of that guy. Very nice. This one looks a little bit more like a standard bluegill to me. Sometimes I just have a hard time keeping up with all the different sunfish types. And then once you start thinking about how they're hybrids of each other, then it really gets complex. So we've got three in a row. What do you think? You think we can get a fourth right here off this little tree? Oh, he's bumping it. Oh, he's thinking, he's pulling on it. There he is. Boom. God, this is fun. I don't care. These fish are so pretty. Look at this one. Really nice colors. Really nice colors. God, I love these fish, man. I love them. All right, four in a row. Let's do this thing. Let's see if we can get five in a row. If I get five in a row, y'all have to comment below what your favorite type of sunfish is, what your favorite type of sunfish is, whether it's based on color or fighting or whatever, what is your favorite type of sunfish? But first, let's get our fifth in a row, let's do it. Oh, that's a perfect cast. If that doesn't catch one, then I'll just lose my mind. Oh, there he is, boom, five in a row. Oh my gosh, the absolute nursery, my friends. Okay, what is your favorite type of sunfish? Comment below. Wow, look at that fish. These fish are so gorgeous. So here's the thing, this rig is absolutely excellent for not only, you know, advanced fishermen, but this is a great rig for someone that's like an amateur fisherman. So if you're trying to take kids fishing, show them what the heck to do, whatever, this is something that almost anybody can do and have a great time on the water with. Eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. There he is. Oh, better fish, better fish, better fish. There it is. See, it's only a matter of time. See, not a huge one by any means, but look at that. It's certainly a healthier fish definitely a larger fish and look at the vibrant oh no 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 well i was going to tell you to look at the vibrance didn't get the chance because he uh flopped into the water ah well i'm not that hurt about it man this just goes to show that during the winter these fish group up like crazy i've caught six off of this little tiny spot and there's seven another decent one eh about the same size as most of them real nice colors look at that breast on there nice and orangish yellow beautiful god i love this and that's how much waxworm I have left. It's like just like a shredded piece of waxworm. All right, this big juicy waxworm is going to join our just shredded piece of waxworm. Oh, sweet, sweet, succulent cast. Who's ready? I'm ready. Oh, baby, there he is. Oh, baby, there he is. Oh, I love it. Look at that. Man, he, that's exactly how you want him to eat it. Right in the top of the noggin right there. Another beautiful fish. God, there's a huge school of fish right there. Is it time to go chase a donk? I don't even know what to do for a donk. I feel like I'm doing the right thing. I feel like you just have to weed through these small ones and hope that a big one gets to it first. Man, this is hilarious. This is just a random little pond in the middle of town. Probably gets very, very little pressure. And uh, it's just chuck full of these things. It just goes to show that overlooked spots can often be pretty good for fishing. So I would highly recommend going and trying out new bodies of water, even if you think it might be a, a long shot. There's a bite. Come on, eat it, buddy. There he is. Boom. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. I gotta move. I love this little spot. I love catching these fish over and over again, but the reality is I don't think there's a big one in here. Man, it's starting to get dark outside, so I gotta keep after them. I don't know if I'm gonna get a big one today, but I'm gonna keep trying. I can promise you that. This is super fun. I don't know how many fish I've caught now. I lost count after like eight, but it's been a good day. It's been a real good day. I think it's pretty clear to me that you need to fish something that has just a little bit of difference to it. That one tree held so many fish. And so I need to go find another piece of cover. Even though I haven't caught any big jumbo slabs or anything like that, it's been a good day. And unfortunately the sun just is going down way quicker than I would have liked it to. But hey, I mean, I was inside all day and just this little bit of time outside has absolutely turned my day around. Hey, look, my bobber's going under. Come on, come on, come on, come on. He's still got it, he's still got it. Got him. Look at that, look at that. Nice little chunker. Nice little chunker. Beautiful colors on that guy. Look at that. Man, can you see that orange in their fins? That's so unique. 
What kind of fish is this? Be honest. I don't know exactly what species this is, but I do know one thing. It's absolutely gorgeous. I gotta keep after him. Oh my goodness. Oh baby. Oh baby. Got him. I, I really do. I, oh, how did he pop off? Huh. A little bit of slack got in my line and he just popped right off. It was just another like three and a half inch sunfish. Not exactly worried about it. The old float and fly with the 180th ounce jig though is it's becoming one of my staples for sure. Next time I rig this up, I'm gonna try to do it with a, um, a little bit different bobber. Not use this one, there's one. I'm gonna try to use a, um, a bobber that's more of a, oh, whoa, look at that. Look how dark he is. That's a total green sunfish. That's what that is. I have a feeling that these fish that I've been catching because of the orange on their fins, I have a feeling they're just green sunfish bluegill hybrids. That's my final answer. Yeah, next time I rig this puppy up, I'm gonna go ahead and put a uh, slip bobber on there. So that way I can control the depth I wanna target. The nice thing about a bobber like this is you can take it on and off really quickly. And it's great if you wanna just use the plain old jig sometimes and then move into the bobber with the jig. So that's really why I put it on in the first place because I was just using the jig to start. And then I threw this puppy on and I realized this is absolutely the way to go. I can barely see, come on. Oh, there he is. He still got it. Oh, baby. Oh my gosh. Oh, he popped off. I about hit my big camera with this one. I set the hook so hard he came swinging. I don't know if I caught that on video or not. Well, he took it under like crazy. So like my instinct just made me set the hook really hard. All right, there. I ended it with one more. I didn't ever get into any size today, but all these fish were super pretty and I can't complain about that. As you can tell, it is dark now. So that means that I wanna go home and eat as well as get some sleep. But before I do, I just wanna say one last time that this little float and jig rig, float and fly, whatever you wanna call it, is highly, highly productive, especially in cold water. Pair a wax worm on that little mule jig and you're gonna be in business. Thank you so very much for watching. Have a great day and we'll catch you next time.